This year I'm not making a new Halloween game, but I thought I would make a new decoration. And uh, the way I'm intending it to work is uh, I printed these uh, three pieces. And uh, it's going to have a sensor down here that senses when someone comes walking. And this lever here is going to have a spider or something attached to it. And you put this behind the railing that leads up to my house. And whenever someone comes walking by, it's going to be raising the lever up uh, like this and the, the spider is going to come up and uh, poke over the railing. Let's take a look at uh, the parts. So yeah, the AT Tiny 402 is going to be the uh, brain of the operation. And you can obviously use any uh, microcontroller you want, it's just uh, I have a bunch of these and they're really nice and easy to work with. And to mount uh, everything I'm going to use this perf board, which I believe is from SparkFun. My main gripe with this one is that it only has the uh, solderable holes on one side that is of the side can't be soldered to uh, but I had a few at home so might as well use them and then we'll need a decoupling capacitor just 0 0.1 microfarad as per usual for the microcontroller uh, and then I was going to use a lithium polymer battery with a charger but I'm going to skip that and instead just go with a triple A rechargeable solution. And then I will use an LED because no project is uh, complete without an LED. And the LED is primarily for debugging, it doesn't really serve any purpose, but uh, I thought orange light would kind of suit Halloween. And in order to detect people coming over, uh, I'll be using this little uh, passive infrared sensor. You can get these uh, super cheap from China. And uh, they're not great, but they'll get the job done provided uh, you're not actually running the motor at the same time because it generates a lot of interference with this thing so it's going to think that people are walking in front of it all the time. But that's where the PFET comes in handy because in order to raise the lever I will be using this uh, micro servo and the PFET also serves the purpose that uh, this thing is going to continue drawing a bunch of electricity uh, even when it's just standing still so, so I will be using the PFET to toggle power to the servo. And because it's so noisy, I'm going to stick a 0.1 microfarad uh, capacitor just for filtering on it. And also because uh, the inrush current is quite high, I'm going to go with a 100 microfarad uh, capacitor uh, before the uh, PFET. And then obviously a couple of uh, resistors for the PFET itself. So anyway, let's get started. So let's start by soldering the uh, microcontroller on. Just see if I can do this real quick. Perhaps for Christmas I'll invest in a better soldering tip. There we go. And then we're going to need the decoupling capacitor. And I'll put the bulk capacitor up there too. Maybe a bit of a tight squeeze, but it should do. Let's just uh, cross over what I've done so far. I got this capacitor on, got this on, and this capacitor on. Source should be connected to the same uh, voltage source as the uh, microcontroller. So now I have source uh, right here, which should be connected up to the first pin of the microcontroller. So I can just solder bridge straight through here later. So let's get the uh, MOSFET on. So the drain is where the uh, servo takes its power from, which means that I need to go from there to ground. And I think I might just uh, pop, pop it like this and make the first six from the right here will, will be ground later. And then I need the resistor. Should go between uh, source and gate. Let's just put it like that. Now this is going to make soldering to the drain later a little bit blocked in, but there is a trick we can do there which should actually be preferable. There we go, let's mark these down. Got this one, got the 100k, and then we need uh, the 330 ohms over to uh, the microcontroller here. If you're wondering why I'm calling it Big PP, it's not just a PewDiePie reference, it's, uh, it's uh, when I'm designing things 
that should uh, have draw very little power. Then I usually put everything with a decently high passive uh, current draw behind a P-channel MOSFET and just call it the big uh, P-channel power FET. And hence uh, the big PP FET. 330 ohm resistor. This one should just go uh, hop across. It is on physical pin 2 which is right next to the entrance here. Uh, these boards are so cramped. Somewhere along those lines should work. I can pop this in some hot glue later. So next we need to do the LED and I think I'm going to put the resistor on the board and uh, the uh, LED should just be connected through two cables so I'm going to chop off the uh, legs and then I'm just going to go with a 1K. <laughs> it's uh, just the standard one I go with for uh, four LEDs. And that is on physical pin 4 which is down here in the corner. There we go and then we're going to hook up this to a little bit, bit of wire. One of these uh, wires has a dashed line on it and I'm going to let that be the ground wire. Now I'm also going to do one extra thing here to make it much easier to program. I have this as an input with uh, ground data and uh, power so I can connect it to the computer and program it. And then I can use these as uh, connection points for the batteries also. Makes it a little bit less cramped up top. There's a few more things that I can do before I'm going to start connecting up the data lines. One thing is that uh, I want to solder the um, servo directly onto the board, so I'm just going to cut that off. And another thing I need to fix is because this thing needs to be uh, aiming straight down, means uh, I can't really put it in like this, then it's going to stick out. So, um, but they've been nice enough when they designed this board in that uh, they have a minus plate both on that side and on that side, so you should be able to just uh, detach this pin, bend it down, and then attach it again on the other side. So that is what I'm intending to do. And then you can just about reach the solder pad. It's not the prettiest solders, and I totally blame the soldering tip, not just that I'm bad at soldering. And then there's just one more thing I want to do, because uh, these uh, pins are quite annoying. They're just wasting space, so... I'm just going to lock them all off. So that means I need to hook these up, but I also need to hook up that on that. So get me some jumper wire. Well, that was a relatively easy solder. Let's see here, what am I missing then? That one's done. I've connected that one entirely. Uh, Server needs to be connected. Uh, the pier needs to be connected, and the these ones are done. But this needs to be connected, and then that should be it. So I'll start with the LED then, which should be very easy. And now, as you may have noticed, it's very cramped down here where I need to put it. But luckily, the tab on the back here is connected to a uh, drain which means that we can solder the drain directly to the uh, heatsink here and as far as we're concerned that just uh, increases the heat dissipation a little bit more through this uh, wire that said uh, this MOSFET here is rated for like 50 70 uh, or something amps and this thing is not gonna draw that much not nearly that much so it's no, it's, this MOSFET is totally overkill and it's going to stay super cool while uh, it's running. There's only one thing left and that is to hook up the battery. And then what I need to do is uh, solder it across. And uh, finally ground and I do believe that should go up top. Because we want the entire top row here except for the, the, the leftmost three here to be ground. There we go. Nice and solid. And that should be it. I should be able to program it now, I think. I'm gonna go ahead and try that and uh, see how it goes. And now I've programmed it. Which means it's time to uh, put uh, the case together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, remove the supports. I printed some supports uh, just under the uh, uh, servo port. You could probably also print it without support, but the only issue is that the part starts sagging. 
And no one likes a saggy port. Well, I'm sure some people do. There we go, I'll remove the supports. So it's time to uh, start connecting things. I think I put the servo in first, but before that I need to make sure it's rotating in the correct direction. Otherwise that's a very quick fix to do in the software. Okay, so let's see. It's rotating up, so that means I want to put the port in like this if I can. And then add some screws to it. So I have the screws that came with the servo. I really wish they gave you more screws, so you had some that you could attach the horns to as well. But I guess we as a society haven't progressed that far yet. One, one screw will have to do because, uh, I mean, it's, it's in there enough. Because uh, I didn't design for the width of the screw when I uh, made this, so... But one screw should be enough. So let's see here. I'll, next I'll put in the circuit. Next, the IR. And finally, let's see if the batteries can actually go in there. It's going to be a little bit cramped, but... I think it can be done. And then finally, just the LED. There we go. And now, before I do anything else, I just want to see if it works. The uh, LED will light up whenever the sensor is sensing something. I put it on a pin instead of uh, on the sensor because uh, I wanted to be able to turn it off in software if I didn't want to use an LED or if I wanted to do something else. And at this moment the server will be at the up position, which is what I want. And so let's see if I can press this on. There we go. And then I have the tiny screw. So now I just kind of want to glue everything in with unreasonable amounts of hot glue. The battery holder should be fine to just be friction fit. Now I need to attach something to the uh, horn or whatever I should call it. I got some neat looking spiders from the local store. And then I want to put that up there. And I think I'll just use my old trusty for this. Note that the uh, servo isn't very powerful, so you can't really put anything too big on this. Which is why I went with this uh, tiny spider. Let's make sure it's really on there. Finally, let's just see if I can bundle up some cables in here. This should just prevent some breakage in the solder joints. There we go. And this is the moment we turn it on and find out that uh, something broke, so I'll have to redo the entire thing. Let's plug it in. There we go, it resets back to the default position, and then it goes up. And then it should go down again, and it goes down to... 200. It goes down to 90 plus 45 degrees. 135 degrees. And finally, the back should just be friction fit. There we go. I'll have a nice little Halloween decoration here. And then the final thing is you just put some straps through here and you attach it. So let's go and do that.